Hi, I'm Matt from buildthatwebsite.com. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to master the Gutenberg button block. First, we'll start with basics and WordPress's own built-in button styling options. And then we're gonna build some completely custom buttons from scratch using just a few lines of CSS code. Now you can download all the CSS used in this video for free, as well as a bunch of extra button styles. Just check out the link in the video description. All right, let's start building. Okay, so let's start with the basics of adding and styling a button using the built-in controls that are native to Gutenberg. So to add a button, we're gonna click this plus icon, or you can just hit the slash right here and start typing button is one more way to add a button block. And the first step is you're gonna add your button text. So this is the call to action text of your button, and you can easily edit it just by clicking, deleting, okay? Next step is to add a link to the button, and that's done from the button toolbar right here. So you click on the button and add a link, and we can make this go, for example, to google.com. You also have the option to open it in a new tab, so we'll do that because it's an external resource. And if we want to preview this on the front end, you can see we have a very plain button here. Click the link, opens google.com. Now, one thing that's important to understand is every button is actually two blocks in one. You have this external button wrapper block, it's a button group block, and then inside you have the button itself, and this is where you apply the styles to the button. You can add multiple buttons inside a single button group, so we get add another button. And they all line up side by side inside the same button group. And to get to the button group, you can kind of click between the buttons usually, or just below. Okay, and the only controls here are to display them as a vertical group or a horizontal group. In general, I prefer to keep them horizontal. And then on a smaller screen, it will actually resize and become vertical when the buttons are too wide for the screen. Now let's delete these buttons real quick. And we're just gonna focus on styling this block. Now you can see there's a couple built-in styles that are default to WordPress and your theme may add extra styles as well. You have the filled button, which is just a solid background color. And then you have the outline button, which has a border. And by default, the border color will match whatever text color you set. But we're gonna go with the fill button for now. To design your button, you can go to the color settings and you can choose a text color, for example, light blue, and you can choose a background color or a gradient. And in addition to the built-in gradients, you can actually create your own gradient. So if we select a color here and select a color here, we have a brand new gradient and let's maybe change the text color. You can also adjust the direction of the gradient so we can make it like that. And you can adjust the border radius. This is a fully rounded button, but if we wanna make it custom, you can go from all the way to rectangular to maybe like a nice rounded rectangle at about five pixels. And you can change the width. So by default, it's whatever the width is of the content plus a little bit of padding, uh, but you can change it to 25%, 50%, 75%, or 100% of the container width. Finally, you get the link settings, which is do you want to open in a new tab or not? And you can set the link rel attributes like no refer and no opener. I actually prefer not to keep those, uh, but one thing you may want to put on, for example, if this is an affiliate link, is the rel no follow attribute, which will tell Google not to assign any weight to those links because they are in effect sponsored. Now to undo the width setting that you've set, instead of clicking another one, you can just click the same width a second time and it will deselect it and go back to the default width. So to be honest, that's about all the built-in settings there are for these buttons. And you'll notice one thing that's really missing and that's the hover color. So we're gonna have to use some CSS actually to customize our hover color. And if we just preview this on the front end, we can see that all it does is change the link color on hover. And the very last setting that we have here, and this is what we're gonna use for the rest of the tutorial to style our buttons is the advanced or the advanced section. Um, we have the CSS classes that we can add to our button. And so we can add custom class names here, for example, the shadow class. And then if we click update and preview our button on the front end, if we inspect the code, you can see that our block button now has this shadow class assigned to it. And so far it doesn't do anything. We haven't written any CSS rules, but we can write a simple CSS rule that adds box shadow, for example, to any button that has the shadow class. And this makes it really easy to style our buttons just by adding a class name or multiple class names in that box. And it will add predefined styles so we don't have to individually style every single button. So let's get started with that. Now this is the part of the video where we're gonna start writing some CSS rules of our own. And if you've never added CSS to your WordPress site, it's easy to do and this functionality is built into every modern version of WordPress. So just go to the front end and up in the WordPress customizer 
If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see this additional CSS, and this is built into every recent version of WordPress. And you can add your own CSS rules here. And the best part about this is it will live update your site as you type these rules, so you'll be able to see these changes immediately in whatever element you're targeting. Now, while you're here, this is a preview of what we're gonna be building in the next tutorial, which is a fully animated icon button using Font Awesome. So make sure you check out that video as well. All right, I've created three buttons here and they're all identical uh, except for the text. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply styles to make this one a rounded rectangle, maybe a, just have a border radius of five pixels. And this one is gonna be full rectangle, so a border radius of zero. And we're gonna apply this through CSS classes. And just to show you that you can use the existing WordPress styling options along with our CSS classes, we're gonna add a background color to this button. So we'll just make it green and we'll make this one blue and we'll click update. And then we're gonna to go to the front end and I'm gonna show you what we got. So here are three buttons and you can see they're showing the background color that we just set in the back end, but they're not applying the border radius that we discussed. And here are the rules that I've written. One is a rounded class, which is gonna add a border radius of five pixels. And one is a rectangle class, which is gonna make the border radius zero and will have no curvature of the borders whatsoever. But you can see that those styles aren't being applied to the buttons and that's because we haven't added a class to the button. So if we go back to the back end here and We'll go down, click inside this button. We're gonna go down to advanced and under the additional CSS classes, we're gonna add the rounded class. And we're gonna do the same thing for this button. We're gonna add the rectangle class to this button, click update. And back on the front end now, you can see that it has magically applied these styles. We have a nice rounded rectangle here and a full rectangle for this button. And let's just dig into the code a little bit so you can see how this is working. If we inspect the code, you can right click and go to inspect in your browser and just move this up so you can see it. Here's the HTML structure of a Gutenberg button block. So first you have the button group, which is the wp-block-buttons class. And that's a div container that contains the buttons themselves. And then for each individual button, here's our first button, second button, and third. And you can see that in addition to the default WP block button class, which is applied by WordPress, we've also has added our rounded class to the second button and our rectangle class to the third button. And then inside each of these containers, because this is a div, it's not actually the button itself. We now have the A element, that's the link element, which is actually the button and it has all the styles applied to it. And so this is the ultimate element that we wanna target, it's the A element. And so you can see, if we look at our rule here, we're targeting the WP block button class. So we put a period before it because it's a class. And then it is also the rounded class. So we put another period before the rounded and there's no space between them because the rounded class is in the same element as the WP block button class. And then we just write our rule. So, so WP block button, which is also the rounded class. And then we're targeting the A element or the link element inside that container. And we have our rule. So we could change our rule to border radius 15 picks or border radius 50 picks, which would make it round just like our other button, but we'll leave it at five pixels. And then it's the same rule here. So we're targeting any WP block button, which is also class rectangle. And we're actually targeting the A selector or the A element inside those classes. And we set the border radius to zero. And obviously because we're only dealing with shape, we wanna leave it just at border radius zero, but you could do anything like make the background color pink, and that would change the background color of your button. So it only targets the exact button that we've selected by adding the CSS class. So that's pretty powerful. So once we build some other button classes, we can combine them to make really cool effects without having to manually create each button. So next up, we're gonna build a button together and we're gonna create a class that adds box shadow to the button. And then I'm gonna show you how you can stack and combine multiple classes together to make really cool buttons without having to custom code them individually. So let's go back to the editor and we're gonna create a new button, obviously. So we got a button here and let's click on the button group. I wanna center this button so we can use the justification setting. And this is a uh, setting in the button group, not the button itself. So we're gonna go justify content center. This will center it on the page. And just because we can, let's add a background color to this so we can add maybe a gradient. So make it this color. And then now, of course, the most important thing we have to do is in the advanced settings, we have to add the additional class and we'll call it the shadow class. And to show you how you are gonna stack these styles together, we're also gonna add the shadow class to this one. So we'll just put a space after rectangle and write shadow as well. 
Now back on the front end, we have our button. And of course, there's no box shadow being applied because we haven't written our rule yet. So let's look at the anatomy of our button again real quick. And we have the WP block button that is also class shadow. And inside we have the link just like our previous buttons. So we're going to write our rule and you can probably guess what it's going to be, but WP block button dot shadow. And we're targeting the A element inside that wrapper. And we're just going to write a rule and we'll just write sort of a generic uh, box shadow rule. And then we can tweak it with a little trick I'm going to show you. So we'll go box shadow and we'll say two pixels, two pixels. And that's like the, to the right and to the bottom. And then we're going to make a blur of say 15 pixels and we got to pick a color. So we'll just go with this sort of grayish color. And you can see it's applied the box shadow styles to both this button, but also the rectangular button up here, which has the shadow class. And then now to sort of fine tune um, our box shadow rule, we can inspect on this element again. And if you click down to the A element inside here, you'll see that our new box shadow rule has already been applied and is visible in Chrome Inspector. And we can mess with the colors by clicking on the color picker there to pick a color that has some transparency and we can mix with mess with the box shadow rules. Um, so you can tweak each of these values and see how they look. So for example, we could do like a big offset on our button and make it blur over like a little longer distance. All right, so that's a cool effect. You can see it really visually raises the button off the page. So we can leave that as our rule and then we can just copy this whole style and paste that into our existing rule. So that will permanently change it. So I'm actually gonna transform this to an RGB rule. So we're gonna click on that. And we'll get out of the color picker and let's drag this rule. And the next thing we wanna do is just add some backward browser compatibility because it's box shadow and it's not supported by older browsers. So we can add the prefix WebKit box WebKit. And then we can just paste our box shadow rule. So it's WebKit box shadow, same rule. And so that'll help on older uh, versions of Firefox and I think maybe Internet Explorer. All right, so we have our box shadow class. So next up, let's build some hover effects. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is add some hover styles to all my buttons, including the ones where we're setting the color from the, from the Gutenberg editor, but they don't actually have any hover effects other than this uh, text color change, which is being applied by my theme. So I wanna add a hover effect. I also want to um, stop my theme from overriding these styles and making this hover color because I don't actually want that. Uh, and then we'll get into some more complex hover effects. So the first thing I want to do is write a rule that applies to any WP block button. And we're going to target the A element again, and we're going to be using the hover class or the hover pseudo class. And we just want to make it so that the color doesn't change on hover. So we could either make it uh, inherit, which would inherit from the block button styles. And if we leave it at that, then the It'll get rid of my theme, making it aqua, and it will just change it to black. Uh, if you don't like the inherited styles, you can just change the color to match um, your standard color. Whoop. So we could make it white, for example, or that'd be FFFFFF as a hex code, and that will just make it so uh, the font color doesn't change at all on hover. Now you notice now we have no hover effect whatsoever if we've taken that away. So we need to add some other sort of hover effect. So let's write some basic styles. So under the A hover, we can just continue writing some rules and this will work for any solid color button. It won't work for gradient buttons and it won't work for any uh, button that is grayscale. So like the default button, it's not gonna do anything for that. Um, but we can just add this rule, which is uh, it's gonna rotate the hue of the button 25 degrees on the color circle and also add a bit of saturation. And now you can see if we hover over this button, it has a hover effect automatically, regardless of color, you can see some sort of change in the button. And if you want your hover effects to be, uh, have a bit of an animation between the hover and non-hover states, we can add some transitions. So we'll write a rule at WP block button A element. We're not targeting the hover state, we're just targeting any state of the button. And our rule will be transition. And we're gonna apply it to all the properties of the button. And just for, um, effect, we're going to make it five, half a second so you can see the transition state and you can see it sort of fades in now to that state. Oh, so I was wrong. This effect actually does work for the gradient background as well, which is great. So the only thing it's not going to work for really is the uh, 
the gray button, but it will change your gradient buttons, which is a really cool effect actually, now that I'm looking at it. And you can dial in this uh, timing. For example, a pretty standard timing is maybe a quarter of a second for transitions. And there's no classes that you have to add. This is just applied to every uh, WP block button. And of course you can change these settings. For example, you could change how far it rotates on the color wheel. So it's not gonna rotate quite as far in the setting. And you can change the saturation level. So you can saturate it more. If we make this 2.5, it's hard to see, I know. Um, but if we make this 2.5, it'll saturate even more and get brighter. Or we could make it like 0 0.5. And it will actually desaturate and get a little bit less colorful. But we'll leave it at 1.5. And let's get into some cooler hover effects. All right, we've added two more buttons. Um, and again, I'll style them like before. And we're just going to add a class to each. So we'll call this move on hover. And this one can be the class 3D. And we'll click update. And we're going to create these button styles. All right, so let's do the move on hover button first. And all we want it to do is when it's hovering, it's just going to move up a little bit. So it's going to visibly move on the page. So let's first write our rule. That would be block button, which is also class move on hover. And we're going to be targeting the A element. And we're only targeting the hover state uh, because it, we're not going to change anything about the button when it's not being hovered. So we're also going to add the hover pseudo class. And the rule is really simple. So we're just going to write a rule transform. And the property is translate y so this is the y axis and in parentheses we're just going to put minus two pixels and that's going to bump it up two pixels so if we just hover over this it should move nicely and you can see it's a little bit am animated and that is because it's borrowing that transition time uh, from the default rule that we already set you could also change this rule for example instead of moving the button if you want to enlarge the button all we have to do is change this rule it's still the transform property but we will try scale and in parentheses we're going to put 1.04 which will scale it uh, to be four percent bigger than it is currently and now if we hover the whole button enlarges including the text so it's kind of a cool effect but we're going to leave it how it was before and let's move on to the 3d All right let's build our 3d buttons we're going to copy this rule get rid of the hover class for now and change this class to 3d and let's design our button. So we're gonna use box shadow in sort of a interesting way to create a 3D effect. Let me just grab the style that I've already created. And you can see it's sort of doing this. And we can put a min width on the button, for example, call it 200 pixels. Now we just need to create a hover effect. So let's copy this line here. And we're just gonna add the hover class on the end. And we need to make it do something. So first off, we want to change how much box shadow is on there. So instead of being over two pixels and down two pixels and spreading two pixels, we're going to have it spread zero pixels. And let's copy this color. And let's see how that looks. Okay. So you see the box shadow is kind of shrinking into it and it's being animated again by this property over here. Um, and that looks okay, but it doesn't actually look like you're pushing the button. It looks like the shadow is collapsing. So we actually want to push the button or make it move down and to the right to sort of complete the effect. And so we're going to use the transform property again. And we're going to do translate again, but instead of doing it on one axis, we're going to do it on both the X and Y axis. So we'll put the parentheses and we're going to put two pixels and two pixels in both the X and Y axis. And now if we hover the button, you can see that it compresses in a nice cool little effect that looks like you're pressing the button. And of course, for browser compatibility, we could add the WebKit prefix to both of these. So just paste that in. If you're enjoying this video, please take a second to give it a like. And while you're at it, subscribe. I think you're gonna like it here. Now don't forget, you can get all the CSS code from this video and even more button styles for free. Just follow the link in the video description. Next up, we're gonna build a custom animated icon button from scratch, one that you can insert with a single click, no CSS classes required. So if you're ready to keep building, check it out right here.